tonight. Nintendo gives up the fight against mobile games. Now you can give all your money away to your Facebook friends. And how to unlock Windows 10 devices with your face. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 296 for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and your creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Megan Maroney. Welcome. Let's get right to the news. It looks like Mario the Plumber and Pokemon are finally being dragged, kicking and screaming into the smartphone world. Today, Nintendo announced a joint venture with the Japanese company DNA to create new smartphone and tablet games using their most popular characters. Joining us to talk about Nintendo's announcement and a few other gaming stories is Chelsea Stark, games editor for Mashable. Welcome, Chelsea. Hey, thanks for having me. So tell us more about the uh, Nintendo announcement today. Um, well, Nintendo, you know, after saying for years and years, no, please, we don't, we don't want to put any of our games on mobile. We want to keep our, we're going to keep Mario locked into the Wii U and to 3DS and whatever iteration of those uh, they come up with. They've decided to backtrack on that statement and partner up with DNA, which is a, a primarily Japanese uh, and, you know, Eastern facing mobile company. They don't really have a lot of big hits here in the West. Um, and it's really exciting because I guess they're going to be kind of sharing, uh, resources. Nintendo is going to be taking care of all the game development. And they said, which was not very clear entirely, that DNA is going to handle all the technology side of this. Huh. So were you expecting this or was it a surprise? No, it was totally a surprise. Nobody knew that this press conference is going to happen at 4 a.m. Eastern time, um, and this was something that was, you know, Nintendo has been so adamant. And even when they were starting to change their stance and say, hey, maybe we'll make mobile apps, nobody expected them to make a mobile game partnership. There's certainly been hints that they're trying to toy with different business models. Like, uh, for instance, on in the 3DS, now we've seen a couple free-to-play titles like uh, Pokemon Shuffle, which is very, very similar to Candy Crush, like in that you have lives and you have levels and you have it's a match three game. You know, so it was like, okay, well, they're they're toying with different business models, but where does that lead? Because you still have to have a separate piece of two hundred dollar hardware that's not a phone that you use every day. Right. So why were they so reluctant to put games on phones? I think Nintendo's most valuable asset right now is its characters, and it's uh, you know, we have Zelda, Legend of Zelda, we have Mario, we have Donkey Kong, like. Like, these franchises are things that people have grown up with, people are very attached to, and Nintendo knows that its biggest strength is that back catalog of games, that IP. And I think they, for the longest time, thought that they would kind of dilute their product by putting it onto mobile. And to be fair, like, there's been instances where product has been diluted, but I, I think that's also by from poor development. I mean, look at Sonic the Hedgehog now. You know, he's not really exactly the same kind of flagship figure that he used to be. Right. So do you think that they see more money in mobile game gaming, like more ways to to make money in, in app purchases, that kind of thing? Do you think that's the change? I think, I mean, there must be, there must be money. Obviously it's money related, but you know, that they, they, they see that interest in, in free to play models and, and free to play doesn't necessarily have to be, it can be painful. It can be done poorly, but maybe it doesn't have to be, maybe it can be done well. Um, but, even uh, President Satoru Iwata said he doesn't want to see a lot of in-app purchases, you know, gating these experiences. Right. So you wrote an article in Mashable today about how Nintendo wasn't giving up on the console. Uh, what made you say this? Well, they also slipped in a little bit of a console news announcement along with this, uh, this whole big announcement. They're like, oh, by the way, we're also working on NX, codename NX is our next console. And you feel like you that Nintendo clearly stuck this announcement in just to say, like, hey, guys, we're not giving up on consoles either. Don't forget about that. But I also feel like it might be a little bit of a slap in the face to Wii U owners. You know, that console's only been out for three years. 
And uh, it certainly has had flagging sales. It's sitting at around 9 million sold, which after two holiday seasons is a little rough, I would say. Um, and especially compared to like something like the PlayStation 4, which has sold 20 million units worldwide after a year and change. So, Well, do you think this is reflecting the general public? I mean, do you play console games less than oh, you absolutely. do? No. I, I mean, well, it's my job to play console games. <laughs> but but is, it, is it waning with the more places that you have to play games with mobile games? Or do no, you- because I think that these, these offer different experiences. And, you know, you play a different kind of game on your phone than you would if you're going to, like, sink down and invest time into something, like, on a handheld console, on your on a gaming console, on your TV. But, I mean, it's also that just, like, you have to realize your consumer base is aging out of having that kind of time. You know, if you have people who are Nintendo fans when they were kids, they now have families of their own. Maybe they don't have time to play games. So you're dealing with a broader range of consumers. Obviously, mobile is just bringing new consumers that have never owned a gaming console to, like, playing games for the first time. People are playing Angry Birds and Candy Crush and Dots and all those things. Right. So let's move on to the announcement that Google made today. Uh, They are going to, like the Apple Store has always done, they're going to now be reviewing submissions to the Google Play Store. Uh, They're going to assign ratings to them. According to a Google blog post, they'll be using the standard ESRB rating system. But they also said they were going to have specific people on their staff uh, rate and, and and judge these games before they were available, or games in any apps. What effect do you think this will have on games from the Play Store? Oh, I mean, Google's kind of always been kind of a crazy, sometimes crappy Wild West of the App Store. I mean, no offense, they're wonderful people at Google, but, like, every every developer almost always is going to iOS first, and why? It's just, you know, like, Things are more organized. You can make money because there's not piracy. All these, like, you know, it's just more standardized for those reasons. And instead, on Google Play, you get, like, a million weird knockoffs and clones and things like that. So I'm like, this is just amazing that it's it's now happening. Like, this is almost this Nintendo situation of, like, finally, you guys are doing something that people were already doing before. Right. Who do you think this team of experts are that they're claiming will review the apps? Any ideas? I don't know. I, don't, I mean... <laughs> Apple, I know Apple has like an editorial board and I wonder if it's this like the same kind of people, but uh, it's going to be interesting because they, I read that it's going to be, you know, uh, the, the age ratings are based on a survey that's filled out by the developer, not based on, I mean, like it then will be double checked Um, and age ratings obviously vary differently wildly by country. So, you know, stuff that's okay in the U S is not necessarily okay in your, in Peggy countries in Europe or especially Australia, which has a lot more restrictive stuff on violence. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see if they try to balance all those. Right. Well, we'll see. Uh, So let's talk Sling TV. Uh, They are launching on Xbox One today, and uh, you can try it free for a month. That was the announcement today. Sling TV, of course, is a subscription service for people who don't want to have cable. It offers AMC, TNT, IFC, also live sports, ESPN, ESPN2. Uh, Is this a big get for Xbox? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I think that they, you know, when Xbox One came out, they really tried to roll it out as the um, you know, kind of position as the entertainment system for your whole living room. And it hasn't really been that. And kind of they've they've scaled back from that idea. And in, instead of really focusing on how it linked up to your TV system, they're working on apps and things like that. So this is, this is a big gig because, you know, Sony's talked about PlayStation View and developing its own kind of like set-top uh, TV replacement. And so it's very, it's very interesting to see kind of like the the differences of what each console is going to try to bring to get people invested in an experience beyond gaming, invested in that whole entertainment loop, right? Right. Yeah, so the Wall Street Journal reported that Sony would be launching the PlayStation View sometime in the next few weeks, and that would be a direct competitor. Uh, What else? Do we know anything else about the PlayStation View? I mean, we know they've announced that they have, like, some of the the same partners, some different partners, but, uh, you know, we don't know as much um about it but i mean i from beta testing i know that turner was supposed to be involved um in that that channel lineup so that's kind of i mean that's like kind of hitting that sweet spot of people who play playstation games and also then want to watch cartoon network right which that's fine 
I'm to- I'm one of those people too. <laughs> no judgment. Um, so what, what are you playing most right now? What's your favorite? Um, right now I'm playing, I'm playing a lot of everything. I'm still actually playing a good amount of stuff on my Nintendo 3DS. Um, cause I, I don't know, handheld gaming is such a, a great way where it's like, I can still invest in a longer game, but I can do it from any position in my house. So I'm playing, I'm finishing up Majora's Mask and diving into a new strategy game called Codename Steam, which is kind of a weird, uh, like alt reality where Abraham Lincoln teams up with fictional characters. It's very strange, but you know, video games. I'm a huge fan of Abraham Lincoln. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> voiced by Will Wheaton too. So all the uh, nerds have to get on that. Yeah. I am also a big Will Wheaton fan. <laughs> well, Chelsea Stark, thank you so much for joining us. Chelsea is the games editor at Mashable. Where can people find your work besides Mashable? Twitter? Yeah. Find me on Twitter. Uh, it's just Chelsea Bot. Easy to find. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It was great. Take care. And next, Twitter helps you report violent tweets, sort of, and Microsoft believes that hackers cannot steal your face. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to learn PHP, improve your communication skills, develop an app or master PowerPoint. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Some of the courses I recommend are going paperless start to finish, income tax fundamentals, and the weekly office workshop series, which gives you quick weekly tips that you can use immediately to increase your proficiency in Excel, Word, Outlook, and more. Classes are added all the time. 21 new courses were just added, including enhancing underwater photos with Photoshop. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn at your own pace on your schedule. Courses are structured so you can watch them from start to finish or consume them in bite-sized pieces. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2, and we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following on this St. Patrick's Day. Facebook is honoring this green-drenched holiday with the green we like best, money. Today, the company announced a new way to send money to people via Facebook Messenger. The service will allow you to enter a debit card and send money to a friend. On iOS devices, you can use Apple Pay. According to the Facebook blog, this feature will roll out over the next few months in the United States. And this morning, Twitter launched a new way to report threatening tweets to the police. The new feature goes along with the reporting tool, so as soon as you block and report someone, you'll have the option to have pertinent information about the incident emailed to you. I think the UI is a little confusing. The button that says email report, which someone might assume this meant that the report would be emailed to the police. Instead, it gets emailed to you, so you can hand that information over when you file a police report. Not sure if these kinds of small changes Twitter is making will quell the anger of actress Ashley Judd, who is regularly harassed on Twitter. On the Today Show this morning, Judd said that a significant part of her day would be spent filing police reports at home about gender violence that's directed at her on social media. Do you want to unlock Windows 10 devices with your face? I do. Yesterday, Yahoo said they're giving up permanent passwords by instituting single throwaway passwords that get you through uh, that you get through a mobile device. And today, Microsoft declared that they have no more patience for per permanent passwords either. The company announced Windows Hello and Windows Passport. Windows Hello is designed to let you interact with Windows 10 like you'd interact with a person. And Microsoft Passport is designed to let you open applications on all of your Windows 10 devices and apps with your finger, with your eyeballs, or with your face. Windows 10 is set to be released later this year. And finally, a few posts on Medium offer us more signs that the Mars One Mission to Mars slash reality show slash crazy idea to choose a bunch of strangers to fly to Mars and die there might be a scam. Australian writer Elmo Keep interviewed Dr. Joseph Roach, an assistant professor at Trinity College School of Education in Dublin. He's also one of the Mars One finalists. Roche said he felt that many of the finalists bought their way into the program by purchasing merchandise from Mars One or donating money to them. Roche also says that the media commonly reports that 200,000 people applied to the Mars One program, but the real number could be as low as just under 3,000. All this to say that even though the Mars One seems kind of scammy, I still believe in going to Mars 
And clearly, Buzz Aldrin agrees with me, judging by the photo he posted on Twitter when he was visiting Stonehenge, Stonehenge earlier this week. In case you're listening and not watching, Aldrin is ripping open his jacket, Superman style, to reveal a shirt underneath that says, get your ass to Mars. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And are you tired of looking at me yet? I am. Now I want to look at you. Send us your selfies. Take a picture of yourself watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. And then post it on Twitter, Google+, or Facebook with the hashtag TN2Selfie. That's hashtag tn 2 Selfie. And if you don't want to post it on social media, but you'd still like to amaze your friends and family when I show your selfie on this show, you can email it to me directly at Megan at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey.